Hey everyone, welcome to another artwork analysis. Now, I don't really have much of an introduction for this artist, but he is one of my favorite illustrators of all time. He's done a lot of book covers and in general, just a lot of illustrative work. You might have heard his name before or seen his work. His name is John Foster. Now, John Foster has a very interesting style in that, similar to what I try to achieve, keyword try, he has a very chaotic, very impressionistic uh, way of painting, but still retains the realism that a lot of traditional artists like to employ. So, without further ado, I want to talk about three things with John Foster. Um, and I'll probably tap into his idea of Impressionism as well. But either way, I want to talk about the Cylinder of Light. Uh, second, I want to talk about Positive and Negative Space. And third, I want to talk about uh, briefly about clothing, which is going to tie into how he paints his subjects. So first of all, I want to talk about the cylinder of light. So when it comes to realism, part of the challenge that a lot of artists have to face is the idea that you are limited by the medium. And what I mean by this is we cannot capture every color, every value that we see in reality. Light is a lot more versatile when it's in reality, but given that we have to put light in a 2D canvas, uh, for illustrators, of course, and even when doing 3D, because when you are projecting it onto a two-dimensional screen, you are inherently limited by the screen. So anyways, we have to create a sense of light sort of artificially. Uh, we don't have the same amount of tools that we would if we were in reality. So what a really interesting trick, well, I guess wouldn't be trick, fundamental, that uh, a lot of artists employ is the idea of the cylinder or the sphere of light. Quite simply, you can look at any John Foster painting and he would have this idea and he would make sure that all his subject matter or at least the focal points will have this in order to create the sense of light. Uh, let me really quickly give you what I mean. So if we were to isolate the main subject's head, we can actually depict the lighting that this character is being employed with, be affected by, in other words. So we can go with the cylinder of light. I'm sure you've seen this if you were in art education as well, but I want to just break it down by drawing it out for you. So, actually, let's make it a little bit more complex for the sake of clarity. Cut out the hard line here. Make it a bit more professional. All right. Let's go with this. So as you can see, I just created what this character is uh, being affected by when it comes to light. When it comes to creating the sense of light, you will notice that most artists will use this formula because it always works. You can use limited amount of values in order to create a sense of light. So where, what are the stages of this lighting. Well, we can go with 
first of all, we can go with the shadow here. Oh, let's use a different brush here. There we go. Oh, uh, we can go with the highlights here. So there are two th highlights I want to talk about here, but so there are something called specular highlights here. The point where the light is directly reflecting upon the subject into your eye. That's where the shiniest part of it is. But for the sake of clarity, I'm just going to treat this as one major area here. The highlight. So then we can go into the transition or the mid tone here, where it's it's where the uh, light and shadow sort of like transition, and you have to take into account that as well. Given mid tones tend to contain some of your more vibrant colors, the most uh, just because. Highlights can wash out the colors, so will shadows. Um, so mid-tones, generally speaking, will have the most local of your colors. Then we have reflected light. And if we really want to talk about it, areas like here are called the occlusion shadows. So occlusion shadows are where if you were to put your hands together, the area in between where light cannot possibly reach is the occlusion shadow. So in this case, the really dark part of this character will have the occlusion shadows. So as you can see here, John Foster employs the entire cylinder of light, the fundamentals of that into the character. Not only that, but you notice that characters or even the f f uh, ghosts in the back are in the same cylinder. Um, there might be a little bit deviations here and there just for the sake of composition, uh, but you notice that, well this one is particularly a little bit uh, rule breaking, but you notice that all of these cylinders are being employed. Every character is being, have that same cylinder. And why this is important is, first of all, you have to be aware of the cylinder in the first place. Second of all, you have to make sure that if you want to make your light consistent in your scene, you have to have the same cylinder for every character or at least something that people can buy. Um, of course, again, when we look at this character and this character is a little bit deviate, it, it deviates a little bit, but he did it for the sake of composition in this case. And of course, these aren't the focal fo points, so he can get away with it. But generally speaking, look at this guy, look at the clothing here, same cylinder, and of course the pants are simplified too, so again, Use at your use at your own discretion. Change it up if you have to for the sake of composition, but make sure that your focal points will use the same cylinder. Now let's talk about positive and negative space. I've talked to, uh, uh, talked about this briefly in other videos, but just want to review it. When you are creating a composition, you have to make sure that your positive space of your subject matter is spread around the quadrants with the negative space. So the negative space here are, of course, anywhere that isn't this character or the ghost in the back. Those are the subject matters. Notice how if we were to draw the quadrant here, it's spread around beautifully. And if we were to assume that this is a book cover, there will be a title up here which is also positive space. It is considered subject matter, main subject matter. So you have to be aware of that. Leave space for your clients if you are making a book cover, of course. So anyways, point is, know where your positive space is. A lot of cases, 
people kind of put their positive spaces really in one corner and it doesn't work. You need to have something where you spread your audience's eyes around. If you don't, then you are wasting canvas space and that would mean that you could just crop your picture and nobody would notice anything. And that's a bad thing. If you have space to crop on your picture, then it's not going to work. So in this case, if I were to crop this picture, it can still work, but if we were to assume that there will be a, pay, a book title, then it wouldn't work as well. We need to have some sort of space here for that. And again, really note where in space that is your subject matter and your focal points and make sure that your, your audience can really move around the canvas so, like this. And then probably look around the title here as well. And as a final note, I want to talk about the way he renders clothing. John Foster love his way of rendering clothing because I am a lazy artist. Well, in this case, I'm not calling John Foster lazy, but I love the way that he simplifies clothing into brush strokes, even though that the clothing here is very simplified, we feel that the folds are being moved around. Notice how he moves the brush stroke through and through to create the rhythm. This is where I want to just end it off with when you are doing impressionism. It's not just chaos. Impressionism really puts emphasis on your directions of your brush strokes. If they're not good, then the feeling of clothing here would not read as well. And in this case, John Foster is masterful in creating that impression of clothing. It might not be hardcore impressionism as you would imagine, but he employs those techniques. Um, you could look into John Singer Sargent as well, who also simplifies clothing very well. And even if we were to look at the skin here, a lot of these cases, the skin is rough because of the fact that he leaves, uh, albeit small brush strokes on his face. That creates, again, the sense that, yes, this is a face, but it's not perfectly rendered. We don't need that. Not all subject matter needs that. For a gritty guy with roughed up clothing, the impressionistic brush strokes kind of emphasize that feeling. Anyways, thank you for watching and I'll see you next time.